It's a man named Grabenikov from Russia. Uh, Grabenikov was kind of a uh, non-conventional scientist. He was an entomologist, did a lot of work with uh, you know, bugs, entomology. And his favorite thing was to go out into the steppes of Russia and into the various outer hinterlands and camp out in the summers and uh, study his favorite subject. And on one of these expeditions, uh, he started seeing some weird effects. This, this is all explained in great detail on the AchilleNet site if you type in Grabenikov and his flying box or uh, gravity platform. But anyhow, the, the, the result of this was to uh, show that there was a, he found a certain bug that didn't fly, it levitated. And this was, uh, he'd, he'd put this bug in, into a little uh, vial or something, and he saw this vial jumping up off the lab table, jumping up and down. And of course, this is patently impossible based on any time of normal physics. So he got into this, and he found out that the, the bug wings themselves uh, were creating an anti-gravity phenomena under certain conditions. And of course, what we have here, if, if you analyze, I, I think I found the bug, actually, actually a beetle. And if you analyze this bug structure, you see a hexagonal pyramid structure array throughout the entire bottom wing of this bug. Turns out that beetles have two wings. The top wing is, is called a wing cover, and what the beetle does is it lifts this wing cover up, and then it flips out its lower wings, or inner wings. Now, the, the bug cover protects the inner wings, but when it gets excited or something, it flips these other wings out, and it, it flaps these other wings, and the other wings, the inner wings flap a little, and this beetle goes gyrating around. They can't fly very good, but they sure levitate great, I guess. And uh, anyway, he took a whole bunch of these bug wings, and he glued them to like a Venetia blind structure, and he put it into, into a little platform he built. So they, they were all, it, these bug wings were all covered in here. And he used the, uh, I theorize he used the wing covers as well as the inner wing itself. There's also a kind of a handlebar on this thing uh, with some controls. You can see a thing a little better here in detail. Uh, the controls, I think, had to be manipulated continuously and probably vibrated to create the same action that the bug was doing. There was also down at the base some kind of a lever, which I suspect controlled the amount of uh, lift he was getting out of this thing. Anyway, Grabenikov claimed that he could fly this thing or levitate it, and it would go around at a thousand, almost a thousand miles an hour. Now you ask, how can that happen? You know, well. He said that there, there was an energy field that built up around this thing due to this uh, gravity field building up in the platform. And by uh, this thing building up, it built out a force field that basically surrounded him and protected him from the local environment. So even though he was flying at 1,000 miles an hour, uh, you could go, uh, you know, you could be wearing your Sunday best suit and not get it flutter a bit at 1,000 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to stand on something going 1,000 miles an hour that's two feet square. But uh, this, <laughs> this, this picture here shows him sitting on the ground. And these pictures are much better if you get on the Keely Ned site. This is the platform with him on it about three to six feet above the ground because here's the shadow here down below him. Now you could say this is all faked, but if you get into the other things that he did with uh, shape, they're, they almost mirror the stuff that I discovered, and it, it, it proves, I guess, that you know, there's either two crazy people in the world, or there's two people that have found the same discoveries. So I think that this is a valid phenomena, and I'll, I'll show you why. Next slide is a uh, micrograph that I took of a beetle inner wing. This is at a 100x. If you look closely at this thing, you can see rows of bumps all along the bottom of this wing. Uh, and it, there, the, each row is staggered uh, from the next row uh, next to it. And this is all over the surface of the bottom of the wing. Now, I don't know of any aerodynamic surface that has bumps all over the bottom to help it fly better. 
If you blow this up to 430x, uh, you can start to see some of this microstructure of the uh, cells that form uh, where these bumps are. The next slide at uh, 970x, you start to see what these bumps that stick up are. They're a uh, hairs, look like hairs or uh, fibers that, that grow out of the center of these hexagonal cells. And of course this harkens back to my basic shape power discovery is that each one of these because of their uh, shape going down to a point is creating a magnetic field. And remember a magnetic field is a rotating piece of vortex in the ether.